It's told that in ancient times there was a land where the moon never rose at night. In that land, once the sun sank, the sky was a big black inky cloak all over the landscape. It seemed to press down on the people and no stars pierced it. There wasn't even a single twinkle. Once four young lads from that land set off on a journey and they finally arrived in another kingdom just as the sun there was setting behind the hills. They saw in the sky a beautiful glistening white ball and this ball was held by the branches of a big oak tree. They stood there in amazement. While the light was pale and it wasn't very strong, still you could distinguish all the fields and the houses and the roads in that landscape. They stood there looking at it. Just then a farmer was passing by driving a wagon and they stopped this man and they said, what's that great ball of light over there? And he said, well, that's called the moon. That was brought here by the mayor of this land. He bought it for three thalers and he hung it up in that tree. The man went away and then the four began to discuss what they'd seen and what they'd heard. One of them said, we could really do with a great ball of light in our land like that. In fact, I know a tree that would hold it up. The second man said, I think we should take that ball home with us. The people in this land, they can buy another one. The third man said, I can climb, and I'm sure I can climb into that tree and take down that great moon thing. The fourth man went away and came back soon after with horses and a wagon. The third man climbed into the tree. He bored a hole in the moon and slipped a rope through it. And very carefully, they managed to lower the moon down onto the back of the wagon. Then they covered it with a big cloth so that nobody would see the theft. They set off and they got back safely to their own land with the moon. And there they hung it up in a tree and they managed to keep the moon glowing every night. They had to make sure it had plenty of oil and they kept the wick trimmed. And for this job, the people of the land gave them a taller every week. And the people of the land were delighted because now at least they had light in the night time. And this light glowed over the countryside, pale but enough to help people distinguish all the features of that landscape. The moon even shone in through the windows of chambers and rooms. The people were delighted. Time went by, as time often does, and these four men grew older. One of them became sick and he realised he was about to die. And he insisted that when he died, his portion of the moon should be buried with him because he owned it. So, when the man died, the mayor of that place climbed up into the tree and with a big garden shears, he cut a quarter off the moon and had it buried in the coffin of the man who had died. It didn't seem to diminish the light. Time went by, the second man died and his quarter of the moon was cut off and buried in his coffin. The light was getting dimmer. And of course, it was even dimmer after the third man died and his portion of the moon was buried with him. And finally, when the last of those four men died, the last piece of the moon was taken down and buried underground. And once more, the land was covered in darkness and people who went out at night without lanterns were bumping each other's heads off each other and falling into ditches and smacking into trees and the like. But now, the four pieces of the moon underground in the underworld where there never had been any light these four pieces came together and began to glow so now there was a moon in the underworld and this made the people asleep in the graves there restless and they woke up and they got up out of their graves and started wandering about in this pale light they went back to their own old ways. They began to dance and play and sing. They went into taverns and called for drink. They got drunk. They began to argue. Sticks were produced and a big melee of a fight started. Well, the sound of all this rumpus reached heaven, up there where St. Peter guards the gate of heaven. And when he heard all this racket coming from the underworld, he thought that his arch enemy was gathering together his armies to attack heaven. So he called together all the angels of heaven. And then St. Peter rode out through the gate of heaven down into the underworld and he soon saw what the problem was. He told all the dead people to keep quiet and get back into their graves, which they did. And then 
he took that moon and he brought it out of the underworld and he hung it in the sky and that's where it is to this very day.